Welcome back to Ted's Talks and Walks. Today we are continuing our discussion about wilderness navigation. Last time we introduced a topic uh, by talking about landscape literacy, how to take cues from the environment where north, south, east, and west are, sunrise, stars, etc. So today we're going to talk about maps, get more specific. We're going to introduce the compass, orienteering compass as well. All right. We showed you a picture of Humphreys Peak last time. Had that snow field on the east side of the mountain. As you're hiking that highest point in Arizona, 12,633 feet above sea level, you're going to be near the summit and you think you're there, you're done. No. It's a false summit. You get to that point and then you can see a dip and a higher summit yet ahead of you. That can be a little frustrating. A topographic map is an aerial view so that you can see that, all right, from the sky and that's what the map provides. Now there's a lot of different kinds of maps out there and sometimes you'll use several because each one has a different purpose. There are specific trail maps, highway maps, forest service maps, maps of maps, okay? So they each have a particular function and you use them sometimes in conjunction with one another. All right, so let's talk about the topographic map. We're gonna talk about what information is around the border of the map and then we're gonna talk about information from within the body of the map and they're very different but they work together uh, so we're going to start top right corner the top right corner of the topographic map tells you in this case Apache Junction Quadrangle that's where Arizona 7.5 minute series topographic topo, surface, graphic, picture, picture of the surface. Seven and a half minute series, seven and a half minutes of latitude, seven and a half minutes of longitude. You can't see in the picture there, but it gives you the latitude and longitude in the corner. There is nowhere else in the world with that set of numbers. So it's unique in the world. You can also see in that corner shot, top right corner, some information about the, the numbers along the border, and that has to do with how the land is divided up, <clears throat> either with longitude and latitude lines or these grid ticks that are a metric system. You can also see then within the body of the map there, these brown squiggly lines. Okay, we're gonna talk about that uh, shortly. There's other information, symbols, blue little squiggly lines, black words, black little dot lines, and all of that means something, and I'll, we'll have a picture which is going to explain all those symbols, all right? So top right, name of the map, the series, longitude, latitude. There's also the name as you go around the border of adjacent maps, so you know what map is next to you. Now let's go to the bottom right corner all the way down, we see the longitude latitude again. Notice that the longitude number, lower right, same as top right. What does that tell you? That tells you that that north-south line, edge of the map is true, north-south. <clears throat> and if you'll notice, then when you look at the lower right, uh, lower left, the latitude numbers are the same. That's how far we are above the equator. All right, so that tells you that the bottom line and the top line are true east-west. That's important. And it was a quadrangle, so it's a four-angle uh, shape. You'll notice, too, as you look at a map, and you can get these from the U.S. Geological Survey online, downloaded for free. If you want to purchase one, have them send it to you, and it's 15 dollars per map. Lower right um, gives you the name of the map again, 
it gives you a little bit of classification of road symbols, which is pretty cryptic and it gets more detailed with uh, we show you the picture of all the symbols. Tells you where, has a little picture of where this map is within the state of Arizona. Okay. Um, it gives you the date of the map, and I think it's in 56, but it's updated 1982, all right, and the photo revisions are printed in that purple, 1982. It's not field check. They flew over, took a new picture, series of pictures, and then they reprinted the map with the updates. And in a place like Apache Junction, around Phoenix area, it's changing rapidly, people stuff. And so, it doesn't matter the map is 1956 as far as the terrain is concerned. It's not going to change for hundreds of years. And the purpose of this map is to see the terrain. Some of these other maps, like a Forest Service map, which was printed in the last couple, three years, you're going to use for roads and buildings and stuff like that. Okay? Now we're going to continue across the border of the map to the middle. Now this is where it gets real crucial. You're going to notice uh, several things. The scale. The scale on the seven and a half minute series topographic map is 1 to 24,000. What does that mean? One of anything on the map is 24,000 of the same thing in the real world. Okay? One inch on the map is 24,000 inches in the field. One foot on the map is 24,000 feet in the field. So what does that tell you? How can you use that? Well, it doesn't tell you too much. Except it's the most detailed, widely available map in the United States. You're going to use that based upon those bar graphs there. They tell you this far is a mile or this far is a kilometer or whatever. Okay, so that's how you can actually translate one to 24,000 in usable uh, information, horizontal distance, you're measuring how far you're going across the landscape, okay? Um, it's a proportion. They've shrunk the land down 24,000 times and stuck it on this piece of paper. That's what it means. And that's how you use it with those bar graphs. Next, contour interval, 10 feet. You'll see all those brown squiggly lines there, and if you recall from the top right, those lines were very close together, and that's vertical distance. They're still 10 feet apart, up or down, on this part of the map, but you notice the lines are further apart. What does that tell you? The land in this part of the uh, terrain is not nearly as steep when the lines are further apart as it was at the top right of the map, okay? All right, next. The top of the map, as I said, with this right side being true north and south and the bottom and top being true east and west, the map speaks true north language, okay? <coughs> The compass does not speak that language. We talked about the land speaking a language, having a message. You have to understand the language. Okay, The map does not understand the language of the compass. The compass does not understand the language of the map. So you have to translate so that they speak the same language. If you're in Savannah, Georgia, they speak the same language. Okay, Magnetic north moves around a little bit doesn't stay the same like true north does. The north pole is the north pole, okay? So what this little diagram tells you, where MN, magnetic north, is two things. It tells you the quantity of the difference between true north and magnetic north, and in this case, right now on this map, it's 12 and a half degrees. That's the quantitative difference. It also tells you the qualitative difference it's easterly declination. That means magnetic north is to the east of true north. If you're in Maine, it's the opposite. And that flips the rules that you follow to translate the language so that they are on the same page. Okay? If you mathematically uh, resolve that difference, it gets confusing because people get it mixed up. 
because again, if it's here in Arizona, if you're going from the map, you measure an angle, and the compass is simply a protractor on the map measuring angles. You love geometry? It's really a cool uh, mathematics. Okay, map to terrain minus the difference. So they speak the same language. If you're in Maine, you do the opposite, and people get it mixed up. So it's best just to forget it and use another method. Some compasses have devices or modifications to where you can adjust it so it speaks to North language. All right, and that's one way that you can resolve the difference. So mathematically, you can modify the compass. I suggest you modify the map. All right? All right. Now we've got a picture of all the symbols on the map. So within the body, the colors and the symbols are relatively intuitive. Green for vegetation. Now you'll notice on the map there's no green. That does not mean there's no vegetation. It's not heavy vegetation like a forest, which would be a solid green. A speckled green would be scrub or brush land. Um, brown, obviously, for the land. Black for uh, civilized elements, roads, power lines, railroads, whatever. Buildings, um, blue for water. Not much of that in Arizona, especially on this map. Solid blue water all the time. Dashed blue water sometimes. That's most of the time in Arizona. Anyway, you can look at that chart and it gives you all the symbols. We won't go into that here. Next, okay, that's the map. Pretty straightforward. Some people are not good with directions and they're not good with maps. So it's gonna take a little more effort sometimes to figure it out. So now we're going to talk about the compass. It needs to be an orienteering compass. Okay, this is not an orienteering compass. Okay, because it does not have the features of an orienteering compass. And what are those? Okay, it still has a magnetic needle in it, and that's great. However, if you're going to use the compass with the map, the compass has to be an orienteering compass. It has to have straight edges. You have to be able to see through it. It has to have a dial that spins and it's marked off in two degree increments. If it's a, like four degrees or something, there's fewer markings, it's not as accurate. Um, this one's got a magnifying glass, a little scale across the top. Okay, so it's got the magnetic needle in there, the red end pointing north, and it's got lines inside there that are going to uh, follow this dial when it spins. The dial has to spin. Okay, all right. So that's what you'll need in an orienteering compass. Now, before you go out into uh, the world to use these together, and this example is going to come from Usury Park. Okay, so the map um, that we're going to use and go out in the field to test this. All right, is Usury Park in uh, Mesa. It's one of the county parks, Maricopa County Regional Parks, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to modify the map to speak compass language. When you are using the compass with the map, you're going to take a reading on that mountain, and then you're going to translate that reading onto the map and draw a line. It takes two points to make a line, you and that mountain, all right? So in order to take that line, you're just measuring that angle off of north, and you're going to draw it on the paper. You need to have a grid on the paper to take from the compass to the paper, which means that you're taking the magnetic reading and put it on this piece of paper. So you're, what you're going to do is you're going to modify the map to speak compass language. How do you do that? You take your compass or a, another protractor, it doesn't really matter, and you set the reading on the compass to the declination, 12 and a half degrees. You take the lines in the dial and you put them on the edge of the map, okay? And then you're going to draw a line on the edge of the compass. So then you move the compass up a little bit, draw another line. You move it up a little bit, draw another line in the area where you are going to be. It helps if you use different colored pen. If you don't draw these lines, you're going to have to draw north and south lines and then convert it to mathematically or some other way anyway. So you need to have some lines on the map. You might as well make it easy on yourself and draw the lines on the magnetic 
uh, angle for that map. Okay? And that's all that you're going to do. And you're going to have then this map with a series of lines on it so that when you take a reading on the map, you are going to then use this grid to draw it there. So you know where you're at. You're going to draw not one line, at least two lines. Two lines cross at a point, that is you. But you always take a third line because you want to do all you can to make sure you're accurate, and that third line is a check on your accuracy. Okay. When you do that, you're going to determine specifically where you are, not about where you are. Specifically, and then you're going to ask the question, whenever you're doing this out in the wilderness, does this make sense? If the lines cross in a wash and you're on a ridge, you're going to have to adjust a little bit because it doesn't make sense. Okay. So, when you get this down, there is nothing that will improve your competence, hence your confidence when you're traveling, hiking, backpacking, river running, whatever you're doing out there, if you are clueless about north, south, east, and west, clueless about map, where you're going to be very uncomfortable and you're going to lack confidence. It's not a good way to go. Okay? So, that's our map and compass part. Next, we will go out to the field and put it together. It's not going to make any sense until you get on the ground. All right? See you next time.